there are three countries whose cuisines have made the most important contributions to the world's gastronomy, the Chinese, the French, and the Mexicana. You may have noticed an increasing number of Mexican restaurants in the UK and especially in London. This film is going to explain the reason why. But what is Mexico? Is it a planet? Is it located in South America? No, Mexico is the backyard of the most imperialist country of these times. Among other atrocities, they send us weapons so that drug cartels can produce narcotics and smuggle them back to America. A complete business. What has produced an undeclared civil war in Mexico. But that's another story. Let's get back to our subject. Mexican cuisine was declared by UNESCO an intangible cultural heritage. It is the set of ingredients, dishes and culinary techniques. To try to understand why the Mexican culinary tradition is so rich, we will first present a geographical outline to be able to glimpse the range of climates which produce a wide variety of food products. We will also present the cultural diversity made up of numerous indigenous groups which have contributed to the national gastronomic richness. In 1848, due to the Yankee expansionism, an insane Mexican president lost almost third of the national territory. These lands are now the states of California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. The Mexicans who lived there were transformed into American gringos and had to learn English and assimilate English culture. This is how the cuisine known as Tex-Mex was born, which has produced bastardized Mexican dishes like chili con carne, burritos, nachos, etc, etc. Even after the homeland robbery of the 19th century, Mexico is still a large country. Its territory is approximately seven times the size of the United Kingdom. It has three coastlines with different characteristics. The Pacific coast, which is tropical in the south and desert in the north. The coast of the Gulf of Mexico, which is mainly tropical. In about 300 kilometers at Caribbean Sea. The country has as two spines made by two enormous mountain ranges that run throughout the country from north to south. In the center of the nation, there is a high plateau, and in the southern part of this plateau, a volcanic chain rises with perennial snow in some of the volcanoes. In the north of the country, there are two large deserts that can be seen in this satellite picture and contrast dramatically with the rainforest of the Yucatan Peninsula. After the arrival of the invaders, the population of native inhabitants begins to decline. Due to the greed of the invaders, the slavery work, the religious dictatorship, and the consequent violence against them. Nowadays, 
There are still 68 indigenous groups in Mexico. Each of them have their own language, practices, dressing code, and of course, their own food, local ingredients, and ways to cook, according to their ancestral traditions. We are going to talk only about two of the most important groups, the Nahuatls and the Mayans. Aztec Empire was confirmed for several groups. The predominant one when Columbus arrived were the Nahuatls. This ethnic group had a leading role in establishing the empire based at the great Tenochtitlan, which is where Mexico City is located today. To the palace of the Aztec Emperor Moctezuma were brought food supplies from all corners of the empire. Vegetables, hunting animals, fish from the coast, human flesh for ritual purposes. If it's said that he and his court had at their disposal up to 300 different types of food, ready cooked and kept constantly hot by braziers of clay. The Mayans, who live and have lived in the Yucatan Peninsula, have been known as the Greeks of America for their advanced culture. They developed the only known writing system in the pre-European Americas, along with their advanced knowledge of mathematics, astronomy, and architecture. They also refined the arts, because their gastronomy has survived centuries, constituting one of the most varied and delicious cuisines of Mexico. We can conclude that Mexican cuisine is the result of the fusion of different Indian dishes. With the complex Spanish gastronomy, Spanish cuisine, in turn, was influenced by the Arabs, who occupied Spain for several centuries. This is where the richness of Mexican cuisine comes from. We present the six most important products of Mexican origin, which has enriched the world's gastronomy. Although the wild tomato is of Andean origin, there is evidence that the domesticated tomato as we know it today is from Aztec and Mayan origin, who also gave it a name. Its use as food spread to the world after Spanish colonization of the Americas. And the craving for tomatoes became so intense among the Spaniards that they created a festival called the Tomatina, a ravenous desire to almost cook themselves in tomato sauce. The Italians also deeply fall in love with the tomato. Today it is unthinkable a classic spaghetti or a pizza without tomato sauce. <laughs> 